Here with their thoughts on the Supreme Court case, Executive Director of the Taxpayers Protection Alliance, Patrick Hedger, and Distinguished Professor at Turo University, Thane Roosevelt. Uh, Thane, I'll start with you. Um, <clears throat> one of the things this goes back to is 2003, when they wrote into a bill that um, a, the executive branch essentially could uh, waive or modify uh, these loans. And yet, uh, and, and that seemed to be what the liberal justices today were pointing out. Well, that's exactly what they wanted to happen. What are your thoughts? So, Bob, that was a post 9-11 measure. And its purpose was when we're sending soldiers over to fight the war on terror, that they should not be defaulting on their student loans. So just remember, that's the emergency that was in that context. Now, it also refers to um, general emergencies, but it referred to specifically military and other national emergencies. So you're quite right. Liberals are saying, well, the pandemic was an emergency. Uh, the difference, however, I think the scope and the scale of this forgiveness program is just so mammoth. Uh, over 40 uh, million people, uh, half a trillion dollars. And clearly in today's Supreme Court argument, the court was moved by that, that when it comes to that size, the major questions doctrine deals with uh, cons political and economic matters of great consequences. You have to get congressional authorization. Remember, Congress is the, has the power over the purse, spending, taxing allocations. And this is a huge amount of money that was done without any con congressional authority. And the Supreme Court conservatives certainly were leaning that way. And they were also making a fairness argument. Why should these loans be canceled when other people who took private loans don't get canceled or other kinds of loans that people took right. during mm -hmm. the pandemic that right. don't get canceled? Yeah, Patrick, you're the exec executive director of the Taxpayer Protection Alliance. Uh, how will this play out for regular taxpayers? Some taxpayers may be thrilled if they're getting their student loan debts erased. But who's really paying for that and how will it affect other Americans? Yeah, thank you for having me. I couldn't think of a more counterproductive policy approach to this issue because what you're doing is essentially trying to paper over the core problem, which is inflation within tuition. And that's largely being driven by the fact that the federal government heavily subsidizes higher education through subsidized loans. So you have individuals taking out six-figure loans at discounted interest rates, and colleges and universities respond to that by raising tuition. So you get trapped in sort of this vicious cycle. And then forgiving these loans then basically means that you are creating a constituency going forward of folks who will expect at some point that parts of their loans or the entirety of their loans will be forgiven and they may be interested or incentivized to therefore take on more debt to which the colleges and universities will respond by continuing to spend recklessly building water parks as we've seen at some of them and raising tuition yeah and not to mention the immediate impact here is that this is an inflationary policy yeah, by putting more money in the pockets and I, I, that's exactly what i wanted to point out too this isn't a business discussion here but i cover business and the idea that like almost at the drop of a hat there'd be half a trillion dollars um in, in, huh. pumped into the economy patrick just address that for a moment yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're already we're still dealing with the impact of inflation after the pandemic, and this is a purely inflationary policy. And that's going to be great for a few of the folks that have that money back in their pockets. But that means more money that they're spending on goods and services that they didn't previously have. Inflation is a very simple problem, right? It's more money chasing fewer goods and services. And that's what you would have here. Um, again, injecting about and, and even in Washington terms, right? Four hundred or five hundred billion dollars. Real money. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, and Thane, from a legal standpoint, uh, we have about one minute left. Wrap it up for us. Here's the final thoughts. So, Katrina, last year, you may remember on your show, we talked a number of cases. One, the vaccine mandate for large corporations, uh, the OSHA requirement uh, when it came to uh, oh, the um, uh, rental moratorium on evictions of tenants. These matters, that in the end of the day, the Supreme Court said was beyond the authorization of the executive branch. So this conservative Supreme Court is not averse to rejecting the executive branch's overreach when it thinks that it's treading on the territory of Congress. We saw it three times last year, and this might be the next one. Okay. Patrick Hedger, Thane Rosenbaum, thank you for summing it up for us. Thank you so much.